today on the Chat and Chew Show. Yeah, that's right, y'all. This is Betty's baby daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Live and in person. Yes. And he is our special guest today. Uh, my husband is also a pastor, so we had to bring out the big guns. Oh. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Betty? I'm doing good. You kind of had your... Diana Ross thing going right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just how I'm feeling. This is how, yeah, yeah. So summer is almost, well, summer is over. It's gone. The fall gone. is mm-hmm. here. And this summer was really, really great. So Roxanne, mm-hmm. did you do any, go to any weddings this summer? So I went to a spring wedding actually, okay. and it was really fun. So they had, it was at one of those mansions. Oh, nice. And so they were, everyone was outdoors. It was like a hundred people or less. I'm not maybe around a hundred. So it was nice and intimate. Mm-hmm. And so we had the one outside, went inside, ate, and like danced it up. Like and the DJ was the bomb. Really? Yeah. So I can just imagine you out there. It was litty, baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do this per se, but it was lit. So how about you? Have you been any? Well, we went to a couple weddings uh, this year, so they were really, really fun. But I'm reminded of a wedding that I went to a few years ago. Roxanne. When I tell you this wedding had me cracking up laughing, Uh (laughs) one is because I knew the couple and I knew the husband and the husband was a joker for real, like a joker for real, right? Um, He grew up not in this country, in a different country. And he told my husband that he actually raced Usain Bolt and beat him. (laughs) What? So listen to the guy. What, you say did he do that? that? That's what he said. And uh, so so we get to the wedding, and it's a nice venue. It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Everything was really, really beautiful. And I noticed, you know how usually the man stands at the altar and waits for his bride. Right. But the lady was standing at the altar uh, uh, waiting for him. I, well, I didn't know why she was there. So she's standing there. She's waiting for him. And she's also directing everything. So I figured out, oh, okay, so she put the whole thing together herself. Okay, that's cool. But she's up there with the minister and she's waiting. And then all of a sudden you hear like this gangster kind of music. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes out. I think he had a pinstripe suit on. You guys, he had a cane and a top hat. And he put, and he pimped down the aisle. He pimped down the aisle and he was doing this deal, right? And I turned to someone, I said, this ain't gonna last. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he was a character for days. And unfortunately, oh this couple did not last. I think they lasted maybe a year or so. And so yeah. on, I know, isn't that crazy? She said, of course. <laughs> you got to That's Vanessa in the of background course. saying, of course. I'm surprised she's still waiting for him to get down the rest of the aisle. Oh, what that outfit I don't was. know. I, what would you say to the outfit, though? <laughs> <laughs> Go take that off. What are you going to say? You know how you see yourself outside yourself? And, <laughs> right, you, right. and it's like, when you see him coming down in that outfit, slow motion, right. I would just be like, no, <laughs> I shouldn't do this. And like, right. run off. Right. She did. She did. <laughs> She stayed there. <laughs> she stayed there. So today on Chat and Chew, we're going to talk about uh, marriage, uh, marriages, and how marriages can last. So we want to uh, talk built to last is what we're going to talk about. And again, thank you so much for joining us today on Chat and Chew. So our topic today is talking about marriages that are built to last. Mm -hmm. And there are about 40% of marriages in the U.S. that don't last. And Mm -hmm. so there's got to be a big reason why. I know you don't spend all this money, but planning a wedding and all of that with the expectation that this thing is not going to last. So we're going to have a special guest a little bit later on uh, in the show today to talk about some things that can help us. So can you think of reasons why people, they just say, we got to call it quits right now. Like other reasons or like my own? No, yeah. other reasons. <laughs> other reasons. We already did a whole show on you. So other reasons why, some of the top reasons why people, their marriages don't last. No, I think 
<laughs> no, I think sometimes people know, like when they're coming down the aisle, like and see someone in a pimp suit, that they should not. <laughs> That's a sure marry sign. That person. <laughs> but you know, you feel like you've paid for everything already. I Everyone's know. expecting to be married, and so yeah. you just kind of go along with it. So yeah. I think that's one is that they don't know how to stop the train once it yeah. starts going. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. I've had two friends over the years. Um, who one girl I remember in particular, I'm helping her get her wedding dress on. Mm -hmm. And I said, you don't have to do this. And she said, it's mm -hmm. too late. See? Yeah, it's too late. No, no one ain't never too late, yeah. right? And then another girl at her like bridal thing, I said, you don't, you don't have to do this. And hers was really, really tricky. But um, yeah, so I guess there's some signs ahead of time. Yeah. You know, but once you get into it, there are also some things. So some of the top three, uh, three things that uh, people say uh, reasons for a divorce are is infidelity. So that makes sense. yeah, yeah. Now some people have had that in their relationship, and it's been difficult, and they have like worked at it to try to get you know, and they built a relationship that now is lasting. So that's a part of their story that's in the mm -hmm. past, but they've moved forward. You know, some people they're like, oh, I can't do that at all. So that's a one of the top reasons for a divorce. Another one is money. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one, though. And yeah. I think that, yeah, money, yes. I think that's like a... Care to elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think sometimes, like, like money, like, either, like, lack of, at least my experience is, like, lack of money yeah. can sometimes, like, show you what's already there. So if you have, wow. like, communication issues, if you have issues just, like, either like some people compete with each other some mm, people mm -hmm. just any kind of little issue like money either not having enough yeah or having way more mm, than you like mm -hmm. maybe started off with just amplifies yeah. some of those issues already underlying yeah yeah uh yeah i would say money would be a huge one too now i like i think i said this on one of our uh, other episodes that you know stage of life you know you, if you're 18 and working mm -hmm. at McDonald's, you only got a certain amount of money. When you get a little bit older, the expectation is that you have more money. But sometimes things happen yeah. in life where you don't have money uh, that you need. I don't know if that's totally a reason for a divorce, but I think things can be worked out. But that is one of the biggest ones that people fighting and arguing over divorce. And I think it could be, I mean, uh, money. And I think, <laughs> and that's too, divorce too. But I think it could be because each person in the marriage has an expectation about how money should be handled. Yeah. So maybe it's not always just a lack of money. It could That's be, true. you know, I'm a spender, you're a saver. Yeah. So if I feel like it, I'm just gonna go buy something. And you're like, no, we're supposed to save for the That's house. That's true. Right? And I'm like, but the shoes were calling me. <laughs> <laughs> I needed the bag kind of thing, right? Uh, and so maybe, and money, I think, Again, not just not having money, but arguing how money should be yeah, spent. Yeah, I agree. Okay, thing. I agree. All right, two. And then here's the other third, the third one, communication. Yeah, I think that's yeah, a huge that's one. That's huge. That's yes. big. Yeah, yeah. So people, I think one is beyond not talking to each other, but how to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. uh, you, you want to be able to express how you feel and in, in such in your relationship, but the other person, maybe they didn't grow up communicating that way. Right. Maybe they grew up with like, we just fuss or yell or scream and throw stuff. <laughs> I'm thinking about a young lady I know now who is better, thank God. Uh, she was saying when she was first married that she would just, anything would just tick her off, right? She just <laughs> would just go. And she said, I was the type that was throwing dishes type. Oh. But her personality, <laughs> her own dishes, dishes, she's throwing those. <laughs> But her personality is that you wouldn't think she would kirk out like that. But yeah. she was like, I was doing dishes and cups and stuff. I was like, oh my, what'd your husband do? He was ducking. <laughs> Smart man, <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> ducking, ducking. But she, because she didn't grow up knowing how to communicate, mm. you know, I think another one too is arguing um, and not knowing how, not arguing uh, about you left the top off the jelly, but you know, now we're name calling and, and that kind yeah. of thing. And that kind of stuff can like really, really uh, put pressure on, on you and all that. So um, we're gonna talk to our special guest. I'm excited about this guest. Uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Cheesy. <laughs> and uh, he is uh, a good, good, good friend of mine. I like to say he's oh, my yeah, friend. Oh, y'all more than friends. <laughs> my baby daddy. And you say he's just a friend. <laughs> he's 
<laughs> and he's going to talk to us about uh, just tools that we can use to make uh, our marriages last. So hang on, y'all. We'll see you in a minute. Now, a delicious word. Let's choose. Hey everybody, it's your girl Roxanne and today I want to share with you a recipe for a simple salmon. Now I love this recipe because it does not take long at all so it's great at the end of a long day and also it comes up pretty light and um, it's a versatile dish that you can add to anything. So let's get started with a large non-stick pan and we're going to add some olive oil, a small tablespoon of butter, and um, some sea salt to the bottom of that pan. We're gonna bring that to a sizzle so that um, we know that that pan is hot and that butter and, and olive oil is all mixed together. And then we're gonna add our salmon. Now I normally get a large piece of salmon and I leave the skin on and, um, and what I do is cut that salmon into about three to four pretty large pieces. And so we add that salmon into the pan with the skin facing down and so we do that because the skin is going to soak up all that buttery olive oil um, salt and all that that mixture all that flavor it's going to suck that up into the skin and so when you flip it over you have that kind of seeping down into your meat as well um, mind you before i do this i do not put any seasoning on the salmon i'm completely seasoning my salmon in the pan so like I said, we put the salmon in the pan with the skin facing down and put that pan, and that pan is on medium high um, because I want that skin to sizzle and almost fry in a way and get nice and crispy. And so that's gonna cook pretty quickly. So I usually leave it for about, takes about five minutes for me because you wanna look for um, the meat to start to cook on that side so that that meat will turn to like a light pink just on that bottom. And once you see that, um, you want to flip it over. And so before you flip it over, though, I'll add in the some salt and pepper on that non-skin side. The, sky, the side that does not have skin. Because um, like I said, I'm doing all my seasoning in the pan. Now you want to just go ahead and turn the heat down to a medium-low or low temperature. Because we want to slow cook the middle of that salmon so that it does not dry out. And at this point, you can cook the salmon to whatever temperature that you prefer. I like mine to be about a medium well heat, so it's like a little bit of um, darker pink in the center. Because for me, it just tastes better later when I'm heating up leftovers and stuff like that. It helps me to not dry out <laughs> later for, you know, during reheating. So I, I go for like a medium to medium well in the center. And, um, and so once you have that, you go ahead and just turn your salmon off and it is done. You probably want to get it out of the pan so it's not still cooking um, as it sits in that hot pan. Um, and then sometimes what I do is uh, eat it with spinach. Sometimes I add some lemon to it on top. You know, you can do whatever. It's kind of versatile because at this point, all you use is salt, pepper, and butter <laughs> and a little bit of oil. Um, but what I'm going to do this time is... I'm going to make one of my favorite dishes, and that is to have the salmon with some zucchini noodles. And it's I, it's one of my favorites because it's really simple, <laughs> and I stumbled upon it when I was um, <laughs> trying not to eat so many um, carbs. And so all I do is just take some zucchini noodles, some fresh zucchini noodles, put them in the bottom of a plate, um, and then add a piece of my salmon on top, and then... I add some ginger dressing to that, and you can pick whatever dressing you like. I tend to like the ginger um, paired with it, and then sprinkle some crushed red pepper on top. And so what you get is um, the noodles, I actually find that I don't even need to cook them. They just, the noodles kind of sop up the um, flavor, and and um, it gets like that, it gets the juices from the, um, the dressing but it also soaks up the flavor of the fish so that salmon um, the salmon is really hearty and it, you know it's kind of a heartier fish and then the um, zucchini noodles are pretty light so it just soaks that up so you know as you're eating you wrap the you know zucchini around the salmon and eat it all at once and you get you know the salmon flavor kind of bursting through the zucchini 
and at the very end you get a punch of that crushed red pepper so it's actually it becomes like a really <laughs> exciting thing to eat even though it's very simple to make so i love it because also it's it's a dish it when i want i can heat it up and then i can also eat it cold more of like a salad if i'd like to as well so give it a try let me know what you think and if you find a way to improve it let me know as well all right until next time All right, welcome back. Welcome. Welcome. We got a special guest with us, and his name is Elwood Jones. Woo Ow. Ow. <laughs> yeah, that's right, y'all. This is Betty's baby daddy. Yeah. <laughs> Live and in person. <laughs> Good. And he is our special guest today. Uh, my husband is also a pastor, so we had to bring out the big guns oh. to give us some uh, solutions on or some tools that we can use to, to uh, keep our marriages strong and, and built to the end. So you guys probably know, we've been married for 30 years. Long time. <laughs> Where did the time go? <laughs> it seemed know. like it was just, just yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> we were just kids. We were just kids. Aww. Having fun <laughs> with no kids. And now no we got kids. kids. Now we got a whole bunch of kids. Boy, driving us crazy. <laughs> so anyway. So, uh, Roxanne, you want to ask Elwood the first question? I do. Okay. Okay, so we're going to pretend that Betty's not here. She's not sitting there. Okay. Tell us something that your wife mm -hmm. does. <laughs> Can I keep it real? <laughs> that drives you crazy. Oh, my goodness. Drive me crazy. Don't stare at me, Betty. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not looking that way. I'm about to say. I'm about to say. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That drives me crazy. That, okay, I got to think about it. So, um... Uh, uh, nothing. Oh, really? Nothing. Yeah. Oh, she's just perfect. Okay, oh. how about the way I drive? Drives me crazy. <laughs> drives me crazy. Drives me absolutely crazy. So we be trying to drive. Like, I'll say, honey, you want me to drive? And no. if he's, like, really tired, he'll let me drive. But then the whole time, he's all, like, <laughs> looking like a chick, a roaster, a rooster, like, looking around, looking around. Go over there. Do, do, do. You saw those people? I'm like, I think that drives you crazy. It so drives me nuts. So you won't let me drive now? I won't let you drive. I won't let her drive. Or drive you. She cannot drive me. She can drive <laughs> herself. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first. I don't know. Safety it first. It's a but, well. The thing about the thing about Betty is, I but think she wasn't asking for all the detail. I'm not gonna tell everything. Okay. But it's like when she gets in. When she gets in with me, it's like I think I'm like a security blanket for. Her. So it's like instead of putting like her signal lights on to make turns, she'll just turn. Oh like and I'm like and that just drives me like I'm like safety first. And then when I when, and then when I say, "Honey, do you just realize you cut that man off?" She's like, "Stop trying to tell me how to drive." <laughs> right? And I'm like, "Let me live my life." Right. I, that's right. And I'm holding on to the seat. Oh, Lord. So anyway, no. I mean, um Things that, you know, I think it's always communication stuff that, you know, sometimes, uh, I, here's what dry, here's the recent thing that drives me crazy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm trying to make a point and she just does not understand what I'm oh saying. My. Oh my, so I always say, is it my fault that I don't understand what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Especially All right, if, so he, because we are, we call it monkey mind. So I would be like, the tree is brown. Okay, but then look at the sidewalk. And then in the Bible it says, and then Caleb, <laughs> I'm just trying to track with you. Like, you don't know what I'm saying? You don't know that I'm saying the leaves are brown? I'm like, I, this just happened two days ago, y'all. So, yeah, but it's not my fault that I don't understand what you're saying. That's you. Communicate better. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes you know. So what will happen is she has formulated in her mind mm -hmm. what she what she thinks I want her to hear, and so she responds based on that versus what I'm really trying to say. Oh my! Oh my! Okay, Wait, so what did you just hear him say? Betty? <laughs> when what the counseling session. Right, 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 right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> he needs to communicate that. <laughs> <laughs> Stop monkey minding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, to be honest, I mean, um, 
if I can I just be all jokes aside mm -hmm. I mean one thing about Betty is that she's not high maintenance so it's really hard for me to try to I got I have to really think about that you know and I'm not just saying that because she's here but she just isn't high maintenance mm -hmm. yeah she gets on my nerves sometimes but I can't remember they're so petty right that I can't remember they're small things yeah. I'm not letting small things be big things yeah yeah until wow. she does the next thing <laughs> <laughs> and then that's it yeah. okay so for 30 years and things have gotten on your nerves and everything so then what's the thing that was that would be a deal breaker because we were talking about things that made people walk away you know I so I, I'll if I can be honest and it's the only way I know uh, I think it's my ADD that makes me this way but you know I used to say a deal breaker is uh, if she cheated on me and I that was like always the thing and then I really thought about it and I was like yeah, that's a deal breaker. I'm letting her think that's a deal breaker. But the reality is 30 years of marriage, and you better not ever do that, but 30 years of marriage, I, I know, I did, I, on, yes, I'm in trouble now. Like, if anything happens, y'all going to think it's me. No. But, but 30 years of marriage, it just, you just can't throw it out with, with, you know, an event. But loyalty is big for me. It is the biggest thing ever. Like, if I ever sense that you're more loyal to someone else or something else, that's gonna be a deal breaker for mm -hmm. me. And it cannot last over time or, or for a long period of time. Yeah. I can forgive you along the way, but after a while, we're gonna to have to reconcile on that issue yeah, of loyalty. Yeah. Well, just so you guys know, I'm not anticipating <laughs> stepping outside <laughs> my marriage at all. Uh, good, good. All right, so we got you on the show, not so you can bust me out. Okay, <laughs> look, 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 look. <laughs> Don't That's take so it personal. <laughs> <laughs> so you can give us some tools. Because we, because people, like we said earlier, they get married because they want it to last. And you don't go into it thinking that, I just want this to be like a 72-day kind of thing, right? I want, right? I want it to last. So what would you say are some of the top things that a, a couple can work on to make their relationship last? Yeah. I mean, For me, personally, though, it's... It's starting out with identifying uh, this whole idea of love. Because what, what I found is that, and I, I'm not sure if you said this earlier, but one of the reasons that people don't stay connected is because of this whole idea that I don't feel it anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't feel love, you know? And so the nostalgia of it, and the nostalgia and all of that kind of comes and goes. But what really locks you and what really links you, and I like to say that it's, when I married my wife, I made a decision to love her. It wasn't based on whether she did everything that I wanted her to do because she don't. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> look, <Okay>. look, <laughs> look. <laughs> but 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 my my mother and father was married almost forty years, and they went through. My my mother had a mental illness. My father stuck with my mother through a mental illness. Mm. My grandmother and grandfather was married for almost 70 years before he passed away. They both, and I, I don't understand, I, I, I just watched them not hug and kiss kind of love, but the commitment that said, I'm going to stick with this no matter what. And so first of all, just making a decision to love and, and, and identifying what love really is. And so I want to say this because I think this is the, the thing that saved my marriage more than anything. Um, is, is that I, um, I I used to think that marriage was, before I married her, is we, I get 50% and she gets 50% and now that brings this 100% relationship together. Mm -hmm. And I heard a guy by the name of Gary, Gary Smiley, Smalley, 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 Gary Smalley, who said that marriage in real love is you giving 100% no matter whether the other person gives 100% or not. Mm -hmm. And so I think what has helped us is that we know that we're both of us give 100%, which, which we feel like we're on the same team. So that leads into like this first principle that that um, we're not individuals in this relationship. We really are one, you know, and we fight for one another. And there's no one that I would fight for more than her. She means more to me than anything. Again, not because she does it right, not because she makes fulfills my life and all that kind of stuff. Just be, it's simply because I'm committed to her. So two things so far you said is just you you are committed and then we're on the same team. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. committed to, to to identifying what love really is, which mm -hmm. is a yes. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. 
All right, give us one more tool. One more thing you would say. Well, I mean, it'd be nice if you do everything I say. <laughs> so, no, 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 I'm just, I'm just. Yeah, um, I, you know, I, I think, the, and we just identified this recently. So, especially early on, when we were when we were in our relationship, one of the things that was kind of hard for our relationship because for me, I was trying to fil- fulfill her with my love language. Mm-hmm. And so, so, so if you're familiar with the love languages, mm-hmm. so uh, I think it's Gary Smalley. He has five love languages that everybody kind of falls into one of the categories. And so, right. And so, my wife would say my love language back then was physical all touch. Of them. She says I have all of them. All she says I'm complicated. <laughs> and complicated. Um, but but certainly affirmation and and physical touch were like back then was like the main two things. And to be honest, um, <laughs> the the affirmation is probably the thing that men most men seek the most. Yeah. And and when you don't get it, you thrive for it. You know, especially if you if you grew up with that deficit in your life. Mm-hmm. And so. One of the reasons that males get connected to other females is because they get affirmed by these other females. And so, um, so anyway, um, I, I think just identifying, and then identifying her love language. Her love language is acts of service. Mm-hmm. And the problem is <laughs> with the acts of service part is that it's not mine. Like, I don't feel like you have to serve me. Uh, so I didn't necessarily serve her in her love language because it wasn't accommodating mm-hmm. to me. And then to serve her takes a lot of work. Like it's work. <laughs> like if, act, right, acts it's service. acts <laughs> of service. Do something. Right, right, right. And so, and so over the years, uh, well, thank God that over the years she still loved me, even though I didn't accommodate that for her. And then hopefully over the years, I've gotten better at that yeah, and, yeah, and, and yeah. I've adjusted. So those are a few. Okay, cool, cool. Good. Well, y'all gotta, ha- y'all gotta have yes. me back. Y'all gotta have me back so I can just work, <laughs> so I can tell some more about her. <laughs> How did y'all have that conversation though to get to where you figured out the love languages and that you weren't doing like, the right one? So did we take a test or something? We took a test. Okay. Oh, okay. Can I can I tell you a crazy funny story? Um, so. When we and I don't know if she remembers this, but we were in a marriage group one time. I'll never forget this. And I was like, I thought I was schooling everybody. Yeah, you just got to fulfill your wife's love language. You know, I'm telling them, I'm telling them all this stuff. And then she just kind of looked at me like, Yeah, but you ain't fulfilling my love language. No, I did. And I was, Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. I still remember that. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I went from here right here to the teacher of the thing to <laughs> underneath the table. But I mean, that was a reality yeah. check. It was yeah. real. Um, good, good. Well, anything else, Miss Roxy? No, I really like that story. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think that one of the I mean, what I pulled out of it is the honesty, though. Because had you not said that, mm-hmm. then he would have gone on thinking, well, I'm doing what I need to do. Yeah. You would have been unhappy. And I think that's another thing that leads to divorce sometimes is yeah. not talking yeah. about your feelings. Yeah. yeah, that communication. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I like this yeah. whole session. Yeah, I, w- I would have him back. I don't know if you want to I would see if we can have him back. You got pray. You got, you got to pray about <laughs> that one? <laughs> see. So, this show was all about you and your marriage and built to last and so the three things again we said are commitment commitment team being on the being same on the same team and knowing, knowing each other love, love language. I think the love language one is huge yeah. Yeah. because uh, like you brought out that we don't we love people how we want to be loved and oftentimes that's not their love language right yeah so uh, figuring out what that is for each other and and, I, and let me add this to you, maybe you're out there and you're like, I've done all that. I tried. We've gone to counseling and, uh, and nothing is working. So I know that there are some times where things don't work out. And so don't feel any condemnation about that. God can give mm. you a fresh start all yeah. over again and it can be different for you. But so the next time mm. you find yourself in a relationship, you know, you want to be able to think in these terms. I want to be committed to it. We're on the same team and then to try to find each other's love languages. So 
But that's it. I think that's it. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. On Chat Chew. Roxy, where can they find us? You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Chat and Chew Show. And also, if you want to send us a message, you can send it to Chat and Chew Show at gmail.com. So just send us your story, ask questions. If you want to be on the show, we'll screen it, but you know. <laughs> Reach out, if like it, share it, and then subscribe. This episode is brought to you by the Chat and Chew Company. Host, Betty Jones. Co-host, Roxanne Brew. Producer, Vanessa Outland. And music by Elwood Jones.